Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at hadrons, leptons and we're going to finish off with a summary. So first of all we're going to talk about a group of particles called hadrons. We can group particles into two groups called hadrons and leptons depending on their properties. So here we have lots of different types of particles and these particles can be put into two different groups, one of which is called hadrons, so that's one type of particle, and the other type of particle is called leptons. One of these groups are the hadrons, so these blue particles here are the hadrons, and they're one type of group. Hadrons are particles and antiparticles which can interact through the strong interaction. So the strong interaction is the same as the strong nuclear force here. So we know that the strong nuclear force is acting within the nucleus of an atom. So that's what we have here, the strong nuclear force. And since the particles in the nucleus interact through the strong interaction, we can call these particles hadrons. And particles which don't feel the strong nuclear force aren't hadrons. All hadrons are able to feel the weak nuclear force. And this makes sense, because if we said that the only particles that are hadrons are ones that experience the strong nuclear force, and the particles within the nucleus experience the strong nuclear force, then it makes sense that they also experience the weak nuclear force. So they experience the weak nuclear force within the nucleus. And we've said that the weak nuclear force is responsible for processes and changes within the nucleus such as beta decay. All hadrons are also able to feel the gravitational force. So we've said the gravitational force is the force that attracts masses. And both protons and neutrons, which are within the nucleus, have mass, so they therefore experience the gravitational force. And we're using protons and neutrons as examples here of hadrons because they make up the nucleus so they experience the strong nuclear force. And they have mass, so therefore they also experience the gravitational force. Hadrons will also feel the electromagnetic force if they are charged. So for example, we can consider a proton and its antiparticle, the antiproton. And both of these particles are charged. So the proton is positively charged, the antiproton is negatively charged, and since they're charged, they experience the electromagnetic force. So this means that protons and neutrons are both hadrons. We've already mentioned that protons are hadrons because they experience the strong nuclear force, but now let's just summarise why they are hadrons. So if we think about the forces that are felt by a proton, we know that it feels the strong nuclear force because protons make up the nucleus and the strong nuclear force keeps the nucleus together. We know they experience gravity and that's because protons have mass and gravity is the force that attracts masses. We also know that they experience the weak nuclear force because protons can undergo beta decay within the nucleus to form neutrons and the weak nuclear force is responsible for beta decay. And we also know that protons experience the electromagnetic force because a proton has a positive charge. But the key force here that tells us that a proton is a hadron is the fact that it experiences the strong nuclear force. So we can therefore conclude here that a proton is in fact a hadron. So now let's do the same for a neutron. So let's consider the forces felt by a neutron. So we know that a neutron is going to experience the strong nuclear force because again neutrons make up the nucleus and the strong nuclear force keeps the nucleus together. The neutron also experiences gravity because again it has a mass and gravity is the attractive force between masses and finally the neutron also experiences the weak nuclear force because it can undergo beta decay within the nucleus. It doesn't experience electromagnetic force because it's neutral. However, it is not essential that a hadron experience the electromagnetic force. It only experiences the electromagnetic force if it's charged. So since the neutron does experience the strong force, we can therefore conclude that it too is a hadron. So we can see that both our particles that make up the nucleus, the proton and the neutron, are hadrons because they both experience the strong nuclear force. 
Hadrons are composite particles. So here we're looking at a neutron and we've just said that a neutron is a hadron. So a hadron is something called a composite particle. But what do we mean by composite particle? Well, this means that they're made up of other smaller particles. If we look at a neutron in a bit more detail, we can see that the neutron is made up of three smaller particles. And these particles are called quarks. So these three particles that are making up our neutron are called quarks. But we're going to look at quarks in a lot more detail in another video. So the other group of particles that we said that all particles are split up into leptons. So we know that we can group particles into two groups depending on their properties. So here we've got all our different types of particles. And one of these groups are the leptons. So we've looked at hadrons and now we're going to look at the other group of particles, which is the leptons. Electrons, neutrinos and their antiparticles are examples of leptons. So for example here, we've got the electron, which is a lepton, and also its antiparticle, the positron, is a lepton. And we've also got the neutrino, which we've said is a massless, chargeless particle. And we've also got the neutrino's antiparticle, which is the antineutrino. And all four of these particles are leptons. But what are leptons? Well, leptons are particles and antiparticles that cannot experience the strong nuclear force. So if we were to consider protons and neutrons, we know that they make up the nucleus and therefore they experience the strong nuclear force because this is what keeps the nucleus together. So this tells us that protons and neutrons can't be leptons. And that's because both protons and neutrons experience the strong nuclear force. However, leptons are particles that can't feel the strong nuclear force. All leptons are able to feel both the weak nuclear and the gravitational force. So for example, we're going to consider the electron and the antineutrino. And we've seen that the electron and the antineutrino are both involved in beta decay. And beta decay is when a proton or a neutron changes within the nucleus. So since they are part of beta decay, this tells us that the electron and the antineutrino both experience the weak nuclear force. And we can also consider the electron and the antineutrino and whether they experience the gravitational force. So they both also experience the gravitational force, which is why they are classified as leptons. So both the electron and the neutrino experience the gravitational force. And that's because they're attracted to other particles. Lepton particles that have a charge will also be able to feel the electromagnetic force. So going back to our electron, because we know an electron has a negative charge, if we were to consider the interaction between a proton and an electron, they would attract each other because of the electromagnetic force and because they're both oppositely charged. So this shows that the electron, which is a lepton, can experience the electromagnetic force because it's charged. Leptons are something called fundamental particles. So this electron here we've said is a lepton and this means that it is a fundamental particle. And this means they cannot be divided into smaller particles. So a lepton can't be broken up into smaller particles. So leptons aren't made up of further particles. They make up other particles themselves. So that's what a fundamental particle is, a particle that can't be split up into smaller particles. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.